Okay, now, um, so we've been spending a lot of time, it's been, I've spent a lot of time talking so far about um, data center storage in general and VMware storage in particular. Let's um, compare what vCenter can offer us, particularly v v Hyper-V uh, using um, server uh, uh, 2K12R2 and later with what we can get out of uh, vSphere, the free version and the licensed version with uh, the vCenter server. Um, so, uh, with, so with uh, they all support iSCSI and Fiber Channel. Um, Hyper-V and the licensed vCenter server both support uh, clustering and high availability. Um, both Hyper-V and the licensed version of um, vSphere support uh, virtual machine migration. Um, vCenter has a name for them. They call it uh, vMotion and storage vMotion. They both support uh, storage tiering, which Hyper-V calls multipathing, and vCenter uh, does using vSAN and the various different types of, uh, uh, of storage space. And they also support uh, 4K disk support. Notice that the only thing the ESXi, the ESX, the free version of ESXi does with the vSphere client is fiber channel support. You have to have vCenter server for clustering high ability. You have to have it to manage virtual uh, virtual machine migration. You have to have it um, for ESXi cluster. Of course, um, storage tiering is dependent on the ESXi clustering, so no vCenter, no um, no storage tiering, um, and we'll see that pattern continue. Uh, uh, on the next page. So, storage virtualization uh, for the free version. For, for the paid versions, yes. For the free version, no. Tiering, yes. Um, free, no. Data duplication, yes. Uh, though v with vSphere, uh, vSphere and the vCenter server, you might need a third-party application. Now, where things start to diverge a little, um, Hyper-V will handle offloaded data transfer. Uh, vSphere doesn't do that. Um, they will all handle your online checkpoint merge. Essentially, that's rolling a, a checkpoint is how um, Hyper-V describes um, a snapshot, essentially. Um, you can um, merge them. Uh, you, you can use that, um, that snapshot and merge it back into the VM, even while the VM is running. They will all handle uh, online disk uh, resizing, as in while the disk is in use, you can resize it. But the key, the key here with vCenter uh, and uh, VMware, you can only increase the size of that volume. You can't shrink that volume while the thing is running. Um, and really and truly, if you're going to shrink it um, while it's, whether it's running or whether it's not, one thing you should probably do is do an, an intentional defragmentation operation. Um, Windows won't make you do that all that much anymore. It tends to kind of do it for you in the background. But if you want to be quite certain um, that you're not about to clobber any important data, um, defragment everything. Take a look at your fragmentation uh, um, information after it's done. Make sure that you don't accidentally cut off data that can't be moved. Because occasionally a defrag operation will discover data that it can't move for whatever reason. And it'll just leave it in place. It may move everything else around it to try to defragment the file, but there still may be a whole bunch of, of defragged space at the, at the front of the drive, and then some empty space, and then some stuff it can't move. Um, in terms of your disk format, um, Hyper-V uh, uh, Hyper will, of course, use NTFS and REFS. Um, vSphere will, of course, use VMFS. Uh, Hyper-V will use VHD and VHDX. VHDX has more flexibility to it. Um, it is newer. Um, I believe VHD came out with um, 2K8, Server 2K8, and VHDX came out with Server 2012, um, and it's now what you'll see in 2012 R2, uh, 2016, and 2019. Of course, vSphere uses VMDK. Um, Hyper-V will aggregate, can aggregate um, physical disk into a storage pool called a space. Starting with uh, server 2012 release two, um, it could these storage spaces could also handle tiering. Um, that is to say, 
drives of different speeds for, uh, serving different purposes. Um, Hyper-V will support uh, 4K disk sectors in your virtual disks. That allows um, you to um, manage your, your, your storage space much better um, and allows you to take advantage of new and emerging storage hardware with increased capacity and reliability, essentially uh, adapting to the new capabilities of an SSD. It will also support storage virtualization. Um, iSCSI and NAS storage, you can, you can build iSCSI targets on existing host computers. You can build NAS storage on existing computers. And we do this again with storage spaces. Um, then of course we've got off, off, offloaded data transfer. Um, it's supported by Hyper-V and the licensed version of, of vSphere 6, as I mentioned. What it allows, um, ODX allows the VM to improve its performance allows the hypervisor to take to 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 send storage related tasks to the SAN. Um, let the SAN worry about the storage, make sure the host CPU has can spend more time working with the VM, less time less time managing the storage. So if you've got a high um, if you've got an optimized storage area network, um, good controllers, um, good operating system, let it do the work and, and let the VM forget about that. And that's uh, ODX in a nutshell. And we will talk next about uh, virtual networking and uh, data center security. That's going to be, uh, those will be the remaining videos in this series. Um, this is vid uh, um, video 10. I believe I've got another six or seven videos to make, oh, eight videos to make. Um, so, but we're getting there. Um, thank you for watching.